a mysterious daring thief committed a series of bank robberies in the city. The criminal is acting with a unique style. He leaves enigmatic pictures with two symbols at each crime scene. Detectives are confused. But thankfully, a police dog helps them track traces and leads them to an old house in a creepy neighborhood. The detectives find three suspects, but each of them has a strong alibi. Mr. Wildrose says, I was busy celebrating my birthday with friends. Mr. Showberry says, I was visiting a nighttime art exhibition, but unfortunately, it wasn't allowed to take pictures inside. And Mr. Greenman says, I had to stay home because I was sick. My mother was taking care of me, so she can verify my words. Can you spot the thief? Do you remember the picture of the crime scene? It shows a snowflake and a berry. This hint points to Mr. Snowberry. The detectives arrest Mr. Snowberry, but he finds a way to escape from his cell. The policemen are chasing him around a two-story jail building. Mr. Snowberry hides on the roof and decides to jump off it. Can you guess why he decided to jump instead of climbing this tree? If he climbs the tree, he'll disturb these birds. They'll fly away, and the police will notice him. Mr. Snowberry jumps and blacks out. After a while, he wakes up and finds himself locked in a small room. Mr. Snowberry looks around and finds a door. He tries to open it, but it's locked. He notices three buttons on the door. There's a circle on the first button, a triangle on the second one, and a square on the third button. He doesn't know which one he should press to unlock the door. Luckily, he finds a note with three numbers, 12, 4, and 8. Can you guess which button he should choose? There's a clock right above the door, and it's here for a reason. If we draw lines connecting 12, 4, and 8, we'll get a triangle. So he should press the triangle button. Mr. Snowberry manages to escape. He's starving and makes a stop at a restaurant. The waiter brings two trays of food. There are three differences between these meals. Can you spot them? Ready to see the correct answer? Here they are! The policemen spot Mr. Snowberry at the restaurant. They begin to chase the criminal, and he hides in this street. Can you help them find Mr. Snowberry? He's over here. Finally, Mr. Snowberry ends up in jail. But the city is shocked by another crime that happened in a historical museum. Someone stole an ancient emerald statue during an exhibition. This artifact is expensive and very rare. So the detective starts his investigation immediately. He finds three suspects who were standing close to the crime scene. But each of them denies any involvement in the theft. Jeff says, I was recently released from prison. I'd like to recover my reputation so I avoid any trouble with the law. Peter, who claims to be a writer, says, I would never risk my reputation for the sake of some stupid statue. And Frank says, Sir, I'm a billionaire. I have enough money to buy this entire museum. Who is lying? Frank, he said he's a billionaire. Why would he wear a fake brand? Molly's kitten is missing. She's looking for her pet in the park and comes across these three strangers. One of them stole her kitten. Can you guess who? The first lady is just holding a bag with a toy cat. The second lady is pregnant. But the third guy is hiding a real kitten under his clothes. 
A weird incident happened at Mr. Green's hotel. All the fish disappeared from the aquarium. It's late, so Mr. Green suspects only four employees. Bobby, the porter, says, I spent the whole day carrying guest bags, so I simply didn't have time for any thefts. The cleaner, Amy, says, When I arrived at work, the aquarium was already empty. The waiter, Harry, says, I was working all day, so I didn't walk near the aquarium. Meanwhile, Mary, the manager, says, I don't like fish at all. I prefer dogs. After hearing their stories, Mr. Green knows for sure who stole the fish. What about you? Take a look at the puddle on the floor. Seems like Harry has recently gotten soaked. Probably because he was trying to catch the fish from the aquarium. Oh, no. Lauren checks into Mr. Green's hotel. In the lobby, she meets three porters who offer to take care of her luggage. But only one of them is trustworthy. Can you guess who? The first porter wears two watches, one on his left hand and one on his right. The left watch is too big, so it's probably stolen. Really? It's not safe to trust your luggage to a thief. And the third porter is a ghost. His feet don't touch the ground. Therefore, Lauren should trust the second guy. Me? I just get out of that hotel. Anyway. Lauren goes to the local nightclub. Kyle, Tom, and Nick invite her to dance. But only one of them is safe to dance with. What's your guess? Tom wears a leather jacket with sharp spikes. He can accidentally scratch Lauren while dancing. Take a look at Kyle's feet. It looks like he's about to turn into a werewolf. Lauren returns to the hotel and finds out that someone stole her favorite necklace from her room. She runs to the lobby and faces four people. A manager, a janitor, a guest, and a porter. She asks, who stole my necklace? But everyone swears to have nothing to do with the robbery. Can you help Lauren find the thief? It's the manager. She hid Lauren's necklace in her glass of water. What? The next morning, Lauren is having breakfast in the garden. Suddenly, somebody pulls a paint bucket prank on her. Take a look at the hotel guests. Can you figure out who did it? It was definitely the first guy. There are paint stains on his pants, and the color matches the prank paint perfectly. In the garden, Lauren finds something very curious. It's not alive, but it has five fingers. What is it? A glove. Mr. Green enters his office and finds a pleasant surprise on his desk. Someone brought a huge box of his favorite chocolates. Mr. Green questions his employees, but everyone swears to have nothing to do with the gift. The cleaning lady, Glenda, says, Sir, I haven't entered your office room yet. I was too busy cleaning the bathrooms. The hostess, Holly, said, I entered your room two hours ago to bring some documents. I didn't notice any chocolates. And the manager, Kara, said, Wow, I had no idea you like chocolates. I started my shift 30 minutes ago, and I didn't leave the lobby. Who's the secret admirer? Can you guess? According to Kara, she didn't enter Mr. Green's office. But she dropped one of her hairpins on the floor. Mr. Green invites Kara for lunch at the local buffet. Mm. There are four meals that they can enjoy. Pizza, pasta, salad, and sushi. However, some of these meals are not safe. Can you figure out which ones? (laughs) 
This pasta contains shoelaces, so it's not safe to eat. And there's a bee sitting on the sushi. It can sting, so this option isn't safe either. Lauren goes for a walk in the forest. Suddenly, she sees a weird cave with mysterious lights. She enters the cave and gets teleported to a parallel universe. Can you help her spot the difference between this reality and the normal world? This lady is wearing shoes on her hands. Well, that's weird. Lauren meets a wizard who promises to send her home. But first, she has to crack his riddle. Spelled forwards, I'm what you do every day. Spelled backward, I'm something you hate. What am I? If we spelled live backwards, we'll get evil. So the correct answer is live. Harry and Larry are twins. They were born in May, but their birthday is in June. How is this possible? Well, it's possible because May is a town. Gotcha. The town's modern art museum has just been robbed. A priceless painting from top-notch artist Floyd B. has gone missing overnight. The museum's manager called Detective Pressfield to help. As soon as he arrived at the museum, he asked to see the security footage of the previous night. He identified three suspicious individuals staring at the painting for longer than usual. The first person, wearing a blue jacket, entered through the museum's front entrance. The security camera caught her staring at the painting from several angles, like she was measuring it. The second person, wearing a red hat, left the museum through the side exit, which is pretty suspicious. And the last person, who was wearing a black face mask, spent a long time looking at the museum's ceiling, trying to identify where the security cameras were located. Take a look at the footage. Can you guess who's the most likely thief? It's the last person. I mean, he was wearing a mask and spent hours trying to identify the security cameras. After that, there was no footage anymore. So that probably means he was successful at leaving the museum with the priceless painting. Samantha and Joanna were stuck at Blue Ridge's airport security line. A security guard found both of them suspicious and asked them to wait while he analyzed the x-ray footage. Take a look at both women. Who do you think is really hiding something? Well, Samantha has a suspicious face, but she probably just wants to go to the bathroom or something. Now, Joanna is definitely hiding something under her skirt. If she had really been pregnant, she would have used the preferential line. And look how much she's sweating. She's probably nervous she'll get caught. Detective Sharon's office was called to investigate a series of mysterious break-ins happening in a fancy neighborhood. At each crime scene, the robber would leave the word closer sprayed in graffiti on a nearby wall. The first place to be robbed was Mrs. Moore's Cafe. Then the criminal's next target was the town's library. After a week, the thief had left his mark in a fancy office building, a supermarket, and a restaurant. It took Detective Sharon a while, but she soon understood there was a pattern to the break-ins. And she was even able to predict what the next break-in would be. Can you figure out what it was? The thief was pretty clever for sure. The first letter of each of the locations the thief entered spelled out the word CLOSER. Since the last location to be robbed was a restaurant, the next place would start with C, restarting the cycle. Most likely, the neighborhood's community center. In the East Valley, there's a beautiful old kingdom known as Piatra. 
One of the town's most precious symbols is a valuable jewel that is always displayed during the city's festivities. This year, during the last celebration, something tragic happened. The town's jewel went missing. The king was devastated and mad that such an ancient artifact had been stolen. He soon called the kingdom's official investigator to help figure out who had possibly stolen the jewel. The culprit would have to be proclaimed responsible for their theft in front of the entire kingdom. There were many people at the festivity, but the investigator narrowed the suspects down to four people. Amelia said she saw something strange after the bard's presentation. She saw that Benjamin had picked up the jewel and handed it to Carol. But Ben said he didn't go anywhere near the jewel because he had been working on one of the stalls during the fair. Carol said she did go near the jewel, but she had only admired it from up close. And Daniel said that he could swear seeing Carol carrying the jewel, but he didn't see her take it. Based on the testimonies, the investigator had no trouble figuring out who the culprit was. Can you figure it out as well? It was Carol. Almost everyone thought she was involved in the crime. And plus, if you zoom in on her bag, you'll see something pointing. Sure looks like a jewel, doesn't it? The town's only DVD rental shop suffered a robbery last night. The store's owner called the police station to report the crime. The detective almost couldn't believe what he was hearing. After all, why would someone steal a DVD when there are so many streaming channels nowadays? The detective asked to see the footage from the security camera and identified three main suspects. Sarah was a middle-aged woman. She said she still owned a DVD player and preferred to watch movies the old way, so she regularly rented from the store. Alex was a recently retired movie director, and one of his favorite pastimes was going to the store. He said he hadn't noticed anything strange the day before except for a random teenager that walked inside. David was in his teens, and he spent hours in the shop by himself. He said he was doing research for school, but swears he didn't take anything. Can you tell who did it? It was David. The security footage caught him in the R-rated section of the store. He must have stolen the DVD, thinking the store owner wouldn't sell it to him. There's an old museum that only displays ancient Egyptian artifacts. One day, Susan, an anthropology student, went to the museum in order to study some of the art on display. She went into a room full of things, such as necklaces, bracelets, and earrings. She photographed every detail she thought was important for her research when something caught her eye. Take a look at the image. Can you figure out what it was? Look at those earrings. They look completely fake. Plus, they have a tiny price tag attached to them. The original earrings were definitely missing. Susan reported the crime to the museum's manager. The manager immediately informed the museum's security and opened an investigation. Susan was on the initial suspect list, but after checking the museum's security footage, she was let go. Museum security identified three main suspects. One of the museum's guards, one of the students from the museum's archaeology school, and a visitor. The visitor said he had only popped in for a quick visit. He said he had seen the earrings, but they looked pretty original to him. The security guard said he hadn't seen anything strange going the last few days. Everything was as it should be. And the students said they had studied the earring in a class, but they never got the chance to see it before it was stolen. Soon enough, museum security found the culprit. Can you tell who it was? It was the visitor. When security went to investigate the suspects, 
they never mentioned that the original earring had been exchanged by fake ones. The fact that he knew there was an original version means that he was the one that swapped them. Yikes. Maya was working on her latest artwork, which was commissioned by a high-end gallery in town. Suddenly, all the lights in her studio went out, and since it was nighttime, she was left completely in the dark. She heard footsteps approaching the studio door, and the next thing she knew, she was feeling dizzy. Maya passed out and woke up in a tiny room that had nothing other than a metallic door. She tried to open the door, but it was locked. That's when she noticed that beside the door, there was a little device where a red sign appeared asking for a password. Below the device, there was a piece of paper with the following hint. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It took a while for her to understand what this meant. She read the note aloud several times before she finally figured out what the password was. Can you guess what password she typed into the device? Here's how it works. Maya had to type one time the number 2, three times the number 4, five times the number 6, and seven times the number 8. Reading it aloud was the key to solve this problem. Whew. Molly, Holly, and Sally are going to the prom in a fancy limousine, but the car breaks down on the way. The party hall is nearby, so the ladies decide to walk. Suddenly, it starts to rain. Luckily, all three ladies have umbrellas, but still, one of them gets wet. Can you guess who? Holly. Her skirt is wider than the diameter of her umbrella. Finally, the ladies arrive at the prom. All of their friends look very elegant and fancy. Leah is wearing very expensive designer shoes. Bella carries a Chanel bag. Alice is taking selfies with the latest smartphone. And Kim is showing off a sparkling diamond necklace. But in fact, only one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who? Take a closer look at the logo. Bella's Chanel bag is fake. Uh. Leah's shoes are way bigger than her feet, so she probably borrowed them from someone else. As for Alice, the smartphone in her hand is not hers. It has Kim's name on it, so Kim is the richest person here. Kim goes to the dance floor. Bobby, Billy, and Kenny invite her to dance, but one of these guys was bitten by a vampire, so he's not safe to dance with. Can you guess who? Bobby has a red mark on his shirt, but it's just lipstick. Billy's drinking something red, but it's just a cherry punch. Meanwhile, Kenny doesn't have any shadow, so he's a vampire. Kim goes to the ladies' room, but all three stalls are occupied. There's a robot inside one of them. Can you guess where? Let's take a look at the first lady's feet. Ouch! She's rubbed multiple corns with her fancy sandals. She can't be a robot. As for the third lady, her pedicure is too messy for a robot. Oh. Therefore, the robot is in the second stall. Bella asks Kim to take her picture. Kim takes a couple of shots. Can you find three differences between them? Here they are! Kim goes back to the party and spots a runaway criminal among the guests. Can you see this person too? It's the show host! He's hiding a prison robe under his suit. At the party, Bella gets bitten by a vampire too. Oh Kim takes her to the hospital. They meet two doctors in the lobby. One of them is an imposter. Can you guess who? Real 
Several doctors wear gloves, and the woman on the right doesn't wear any. Hmm. Bella gets into a hospital ward with three other people. One of them is not sick. Can you guess who? The woman on the left looks perfectly healthy. She has her lipstick on and a glamorous hairstyle. Although her arm is broken, it doesn't mean that she's sick. Kim comes home from a long day. She's very excited to treat herself with a bubble bath. She's been dreaming about it all day. But someone used up all her bubble foam. Kim interrogates her family members. Father says, I spent all day at the garage repairing my old car, and I haven't visited the bathroom yet. Mother says, I was feeling sick all day, so I didn't pay any attention to your beauty products. And Kim's brother says, it wasn't me who took your bubble foam, but I think it was mom. Hmm. Who did it? Take a closer look at dad's beard. There's pieces of foam on it. Busted. The next night, Kim goes to a sleepover with her friends. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who? This guy is a werewolf. Take a look at his claws. Oh no. Kim puts some cash in a stash in her room and leaves for Granny's house. In a couple of days, Kim returns and realizes that someone had stolen her money. How did she guess? Kim's stash was in this book. It was on the shelf when she left, and now the book is gone. Oh God. Kim runs to the living room and yells at her family. Who stole my book? Everyone swears to have nothing to do with the robbery, but Kim spots the thief right away. What about you? It's the brother. He used the book as a stand for his PlayStation. Kim is watching a TV program about risky sports. Can you help her guess which guy has a better chance of survival? The one who's falling into the snow has a higher chance to survive. Hitting the water can be tough, and he still needs to get out of the ocean. Kim's dad wants to buy a boat. His agent arranges a meeting with three people. Each tells a brief story about their boats. Karen says, My husband gave me this boat five years ago as a wedding gift. That's why it has my name. But now I want to sell it because we don't use it. Charles says, I inherited this boat from my father. It works very well, but I don't need it because I'm moving abroad. And Liam says, I built this boat on my own, but now I'm building a bigger one, so I'd like to sell it to get some cash. One of the sellers is lying. Can you spot who? Take a closer look at the first boat. Its name is Karma, not Karen. Therefore, she's a liar. Kim goes to the nearby hardware store to buy something for her home. Kim asks, how much for the one? The shopkeeper replies, it's two dollars. Then Kim asks, how much for 11? The shopkeeper replies, it's four dollars. And finally, Kim asks, how much for 100? And the shopkeeper replies, six dollars. What is Kim buying? She's buying a house number. Each digit costs $2. Kim's cat, Fluffy, ran away. She's been looking for him in a forest all evening. Finally, she gets tired and heads home. But suddenly, she sees a witch's house on the way. Kim enters and faces the witch. Fluffy is sitting on her lap. The witch says, I'll release your cat if you crack my riddle. I have two besties who are identical twins. 
Emma was born in 2003 and Gemma in 2004. How is it possible? They're twins, but they were born on New Year's Eve. Emma was born right before midnight and Gemma right after midnight. Duh. The next day, Kim meets a handsome guy who likes puzzles. She asks his name, but instead of answering directly, the guy writes a date on a piece of paper. Ah. Can you help Kim figure out his name? Each number implies a particular letter of the alphabet. The guy's name is Theo. Mm. Theo invites Kim to an art exhibition. Mm. Take a look at these squares. Which one is bigger, yellow or green? Mm. All these black and white squares usually confuse perception but it becomes obvious that the green square is larger than the yellow one if we put them away. Kim asks Theo, what month were you born? He replies with four emojis. Can you guess the month? Jack-o-lantern stands for J. The next emoji implies U. Nut stands for N. And eggplant stands for E. Theo was born in June. Kim and Theo go for a walk in an abandoned village. They see a sign leading to a famous haunted castle. There are four possible routes, but only one of them will actually lead them to the castle. Can you figure out the correct way? It's way easier to untangle this maze if you start drawing from the final destination. They should take Route B. Finally, Kim and Theo find the castle. They enter the property and see a fancy living room. There are six zombies hiding in the living room. Can you spot them? Hello! The guys run away from the zombies and hide in the basement. They wander around and see three doors. Suddenly, the basement begins to get filled with water. Kim and Theo have to choose a door quickly to escape. But each door has a surprise. There's a tank with a family of sharks behind the first door. There's a deep hole with sharp venomous corals behind the second door. And there's a tank with piranhas behind the third door. Which door is more or less safe? The second door. The basement is full of water, so they can swim over the corals. Jake is a very rich guy. He lives in a mansion with a gardener, a cook, and a housemaid. One day he goes on a business trip and returns two days later. Oh no! Someone put a huge coffee stain on his exclusive white sofa. Jake gets furious and interrogates his staff. The housemaid says, Yesterday I had a day off, so I spent it outside the mansion. As for today, I cleaned the living room first, and then I focused on the bathrooms, and the sofa was fine. The gardener says, Yesterday, new plants were delivered. I was very busy planting six palm trees in front of the house, so I didn't have the chance to chill indoors. And the cook says, I was trying new recipes in the kitchen and filming vlogs for my subscribers. I never hang out in your living room, sir. Who's lying? It's the gardener. There's no palms in front of Jake's mansion. Jake goes hiking alone. He's in the middle of a dark forest. Suddenly, a witch appears in front of him. She casts a spell and teleports Jake to her cabin. The witch offers him a deal. The only chance to escape is to drink one of my three potions. If you guess it right, you're free to go. If not, you'll be my prisoner forever. Can you figure out which potion Jake should drink?
take a closer look at the emojis that imply the potion ingredients. If we write out the first letters of each ingredient, we'll get sleep, escape, and blind. So, Jake should pick the second potion. Jake drinks the potion and teleports to a desert island. There's only one coconut tree and one banana tree, but Jake can only eat from one of them. Which tree should he choose? The coconut tree. It can provide both food and water, while the banana tree only provides food. Thankfully, Jake sees a boat passing by. It's filled with people. Jake rubs his eyes and takes a look again. The boat is still there, but Jake doesn't see a single person on it. Why? Because all the people are married. The boat takes Jake to the nearest town. There are four people standing on the pier. One of them is a cop working undercover. Can you guess who? It's this guy in a sports suit. There are cuffs sticking out of his pocket. Jake is walking down a black street. He's wearing all black, black shoes, socks, trousers, coat, gloves, and balaclava. All the street lamps are off. A black car is coming towards Jake and its headlights are turned off. How did the driver see Jake? It's daytime. Jake is starving, so he decides to go check out the local bakery and purchase some snacks. The price for one cherry donut is 50 cents, and one apple donut costs two dollars. They also have lemon donuts. The price is $1.50 per item. Can you calculate the price for one blueberry donut? To solve this mystery, we should remember the color sequence in the rainbow. The price increases by 50 cents from red to purple. So the price for one purple donut is $3.50. Jake's mother wants him to get married as soon as possible. That's why she arranges a blind date for him. The lady's name is Karen. Today, they're meeting for lunch. This is the first time Jake and Karen are going to meet in person. And they haven't seen any pictures of each other. Karen texts Jake, I'll wear gold hoop earrings. Jake arrives at the restaurant. There are three ladies. All of them are wearing gold hoops. Can you help Jake find his Karen? Let's take a look at the second table. There are two dinner servings and cutlery for two people. This lady is already with someone. The third lady has already drunk half of her milkshake, and she's busy working on her laptop. She's not here for a date, so Karen is the first lady. The next morning, Jake arrives at his office. There's a huge gift box on his desk. The sender is unknown. Only three people are in the office today, Mia, Prudence, and Paul. Jake questions them. Mia says, I was preparing and printing some documents for you. We have a great business deal to sign. Paul says, My alarm didn't work today. I overslept and just arrived. I don't know who brought the gift. And Prudence says, I don't know who did it. I was trying to fix the printer, but it won't work. Someone broke it yesterday. Who's lying? Mia printed the documents for Jake this morning, and she's holding them in her hands. Therefore, Prudence is lying. Jake takes two pictures of his office room. Take your time and try to spot 10 differences between them. Ready to see the answer? Here they are! 
He's in the middle of a creepy abandoned village in the woods. It starts raining heavily. Jake finds an old cabin and hides inside it. Jake wanders around for a while and finds three doors leading outside. But each path hides some dangers. There's a huge fire behind the first door. There are wild animals waiting behind the second door. And the third passage is filled with toxic gas. Humans can't survive after breathing it in. Can you help Jake choose the right door? The first one. It's been raining heavily in the woods. And the doors leading outside the house. So the fire was gone a long time ago. Jake checks the maps. Karen's place is nearby. So he decides to walk. On the way, he finds three bushes with different herbs. Yay! I can collect some of them to put in tea. But only one of these herbs is actually safe. Can you guess which one? The first herb caused a rash on Jake's hand. And the third one looks pretty stinky. So he should take the second one. Finally, Jake arrives at Karen's house. She shows him around. Can you spot three emojis hidden in her living room? Here they are. Then, Jake goes to the bathroom to wash his hands. Can you find three hidden emojis here? Hello! And finally, Jake lands in the kitchen. There are three emojis here. Can you see them? There you go! Karen is cooking dinner. She asks Jake to go to the storage room to get one last ingredient. But instead of saying directly, she gives him this weird shopping list. Can you help Jake figure out the ingredient? The number implies the letter we should pick out of each word. The encrypted word is pepper. And now, let's take a look at the color of the note. It's written with a red marker. Therefore, Jake needs to get a red pepper. Karen picks some flowers in her garden and puts them in a vase on her table. Can you find the correct shadow? The third one. What about this necklace? Can you spot the correct shadow? The first one is the perfect match. Let's see if you can find a shadow that belongs to this book. The fourth option is correct. Jake turns on the TV news. Airport security guards got an urgent report. One of the passengers came back to the country with a stolen ancient treasure from Paris. The guards initiated a check. The mysterious passenger blended into the crowd, but they managed to find four suspects. Jake spots the thief right away. What about you? All we know about the thief is that he arrived from Paris. Therefore, the stickers on the suitcase can be helpful. Several guys have stickers with Paris, but take a look at this guy's suitcase. The Parisian sticker is on top of the others, so he's the thief. <laughs>